you to all of you for being with us this morning. Uh, I thought I would start with just asking Michael to say a little bit about the origins of the project. It's, I know it's been decades in the, if not in the making, in, in the thinking. Um, right. Uh, and when did you first uh, think about making a film about Ferrari? Um, great development. We started with, with Sidney Pollack. Sidney Pollack, myself, and Troy Kennedy Martin, who wrote this, I think, brilliant screenplay. Um, began it together. I had known Troy for quite a while before, beforehand. He was a, wrote uh, some television, uh, Italian job, a terrific guy. And uh, so it began at, at that point. The, um, uh, what was been so interesting to me about it was the compression of all the dynamics of these tempestuous lives in three months. Mm -hmm. And um, so everything about who they were was very, was all, you know, it, it was the exact opposite of a linear biopic. I wouldn't have been interested in a linear biopic. So particularly this drama, this drama that you've just seen, and its compression, which should have excited me. So in the original screenplay, it was this compressed time period. This three month period was what the original screenplay was about. The, sorry, the screen. This the first the screenplay. Yeah. Okay. It well, it's based on a book, yeah. but but it takes a section of the book and then it it, it uh, evolves way beyond the book. I've known Piero Ferrari for about 20, 25 years. Spent a lot of time. Uh, come to know a lot about Lara, about Lino Hardy, you know, her niece, everything about life and and, and Modern to try to get as yeah, acculturated into everything Modern is as possible. And it, it, what, what happened over the years is that the more specific one got into that culture of these people and their psyche, I think the more universal the you know the whole the whole picture became. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about that um, research process. I think there's a lot of, of detail uh, in in the film, and maybe Adam, you could speak a little bit to that as well in terms of researching a, the, a character at this very particular moment in his life. Um, maybe both Michael and Adam. Well, it, it's, it's, it's everything from uh, a biography to understanding who he was at 19, bereft and abject and torn in a rain, uh, turned on by fiat, uh, with, with the, coming to a very romantic uh, uh, conclu uh, uh, decision, which is he asked himself, who should I be in this world, decides to become a romantic figure of a race car driver. From that to Adam and I being in in, in an Enzo study, which has been untouched since he died in Piero's house, and looking at his diaries and his handwriting and the watch that he preferred, and so it's everything. It's sensorial input from objects, it's understanding the culture he's in, uh, uh, having almost a tactile uh, uh, input from all the objects and everything all around us. I mean, that's it. He kind of explains it. You know, it's just a information overload and take the things that uh, apply to you and, uh, and make sense with the script and, and things that aren't, like for, he would sign things with purple pens, for example, because he didn't want anyone to duplicate his uh, signature, which to me was really helpful. It just spoke to someone who was really paranoid and, and you would read some of these uh, letters that he would write to, you know, Kings of Monaco were really established people. He didn't give a shit who they were. He was very like you can you'll get your car when uh, uh, you know when I give it to you. He, he, and the fact that he built a factory in Modena, of all places, which I understand before the, uh, him being there was mostly textiles. But being there, you totally understand how something like that could be made. You know why why the light is different in Italy in that place than it is in Southern California. Red reds are different. The smell of uh, the the farm, the nearby, all of this stuff, we kind of take in and then kind of discard things that don't apply to scenes, and sometimes it just goes in subconsciously and it comes out, to, you know, abstractly in something else, you know. But the, the, uh, Michael is very big into internal life, so you know, I, I know from playing real people before. Again, you take things that help a, a, and open up impulses, and you disregard things that don't. But uh, this image of him being by after his son had, or his brother had died and his father had died being alone, really having to forge his own path. And it 
being a catalyst for how he lived the rest of his life was uh, a, an internal thing that we talked about all the time. And also just the mentality of a racer was something we talked about a lot, which we did by, by racing Ferraris and Modena and, uh, uh, and, uh, and in California, to just understand that it's this myopic, prolonged focus uh, and how do we duplicate that in playing him of someone who is very much a uh, duck, you know, yes. calm on the surface and, and furiously paddling underneath and there's all of these pitfalls that are happening with, you know, the discovery of Lena with Laura and uh, the company going under and technology changing the game of racing and him taking in all of that information and, and still trying to stay focused on what he's trying to, uh, to do. Can you say, sorry, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Adam touched on his paranoia, you know, his defensiveness, which is particularly modern as an attitude, which is, which is his, for example, when he, when he works on a biography, it's called My Terrible Joy. It's not just my joy, it's my terrible joy, because no matter what, whatever good thing is happening, something really horrible is around the corner and somebody's trying to <laughs> appropriate it from you. And, um, you know, that's just, that's just kind of a, um, uh, a, a standing, a standing attitude. Adam talked about. He said one thing, but two days. He said, uh, "You know, Italy, Italy will will forgive murderers, will forgive thieves, but it won't forgive us success." <laughs> <laughs> Adam talked about trying to just inhabit the mentality, the mindset of a racer. Of racing, and I'm wondering if you can talk a little, Michael. You can say a little bit more about that. Like, well, how would you describe it? And I guess how close is it to filmmaking? How close is is it to filmmaking? Uh, the mindset one has to be. Well, I think it's close to. I think, I think it's close to everything aspirational. I mean, there's there's the unique harmony when you and the machine become one, and you're when you get very very good and very adept. And you're not thinking of where you are at the moment in time of the track. You're thinking one or two, you know, one or two turns ahead, and you're just thinking of what's going to happen. And you're you're down shifting at exactly the same point. You're turning in and breaking, and it's just it's like flow. It's like an eleven-year-old's dream of flying, and it has that unified thing. It becomes very addictive. Some some very uh, blessed man like Jean Bera who who break, drives the Maserati in the, in the beginning, described it, and the only time he ever uses a Florida language, he called it an ecstasy and, and a foolish. Um, he was at that turn where Castellotti gets killed and observed it and wrote about it. That's how we know what happened to Castellotti, that he missed a shift from fourth to third and, and wound up getting killed. Um, so, you know, that, it, it's an addiction to something that's, that's, that's aspirational and I think it's, very, it's a very human value and it's universal in the sense that we, we, all, we try to run faster, further, uh, achieve more, go to the moon, whatever the limits are that are in front of us, we push outwards as a, as a species. And, and uh, I, I think it's my own personal theory that racing is you know, part of that. Um, Penelope, I wanted to bring you in. Um, Adam talked about the importance of internal life, uh, and I'm curious to hear you say a bit about how you approach this character and this performance. I mean, there's such an, a fury and an intensity uh, to, to, to many of your scenes. So, for me, it's very important to have that time. It's even more important than the time when you're shooting, to have real time, sometimes just by yourself, doing that investigation of getting close, getting to really understand who that being is. There is like a added responsibility when you are playing a real person. And the world didn't know a lot about Laura Ferrari, but I was very lucky having Michael uh, introducing me to a lot of people that really knew her and really knew Enzo. Um, spending time in Modena uh, with those people, seeing the house where, she, where they lived, uh, seeing her bedroom. There were a lot of details, in the, even in the decoration, a lot of details in the atmosphere that explain like the kind of deep depression that she was in after losing him. Um, I was very lucky to be introduced to the doctor that she and Enzo shared, and he got really close to them, he, he was one of their best friends. So I think Enzo was a big hypochondriac and, 
and he would need to see the doctor at least twice a week and, and also became very good friends. But this doctor uh, gave me very crucial information and shared with me some love letters. Uh, he had copies of those love letters, like even from the time when everything was kind of broken and they had already lost Dino, and, but there was still a very big love there and, and respect. Also, probably both of them knowing that they would never recover from what happened, but for many reasons it was worth it for them to stay together. And I think the number one reason is that there was still a real love. Um, not comfortable love, not easy, but uh, I think they both had a great respect for each other. And also, he had respect for what she did for the company from the beginning because this is not in the movie, but it really touched my heart when. Michael shared with me that at the beginning she sold like um, a very very expensive bag that she had, and when Enzo was going to begin everything, she put that money there. So in a way, she was one of the the, the first um, investors in the movie with him, and also he really valued her ideas and and the eagle eye that she had to know when people were lying. So. I'm not saying that was the only reason why they stayed together, but there was also a, a, a big, real love and huge amount of pain. And those letters were very important for me to understand who this woman was and, and also who he was. Um, Gabrielle, I wanted to, to bring you in into this. Um, I assume that of everyone on stage, you did the most driving. Right. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, can you tell us about that experience? Actually, maybe, I don't know, maybe, Michael, you should talk about the cars first. Uh, Please. Uh, <laughs> just making the cars for the film, uh, recreating these, right. these, these cars, and also, I guess I'm, question, I'm curious about how, how dangerous it actually felt. Or the actors to, to the um, well, everybody, everybody. I mean, it, it, I wanted everybody to have an experience of of uh, driving these cars on a racetrack, and uh, so everybody went through the unless they did it before, like Patrick Dempsey, who's had a couple of podium finishes as at Le Mans and drives professionally. Uh, everybody had you know, race car driving uh, one on one, and and, uh, and and drove these cars. You know, on a track that we had in Wilmington as well as Vivian you know, and I spending some time in Southern California doing the same thing. And um, uh, we, we, the only, the, uh, the current thing about drives is actual, that's an actual uh, Maserati single seater that's owned by Nick Mason, Nick Floyd Drummer, who he races in the store, but races everything else we, we, we recreated and it was a very, very complex. Uh, engineering operation, they had to be absolutely perfect and build on a CAD computer, which they were, and they had to be uh, safe, reliable, and, and go about 140, 150 miles an hour. So, um, uh, and so a lot of the actors are doing a lot of driving in the, in the, in the picture. Yes, for me, it was um, pretty important to, to have the, the driving experience before shooting. Uh, I think for a month or more, we, we were on the track with professional stunt drivers. Um, and uh, I said that yesterday, uh, when I learned how to drive, I think it's the same for, uh, for anyone, you learn uh, to drive, how to drive defensively, to drive on the sea with lights and at least trying to respect um, the others. And when you are racing, your own racetrack, you, you have a different mindset. So for me, uh, uh, having the, the opportunity to experience that was, was crucial for, for the character. Because um, the protagonist wasn't that much skilled driving. He was a sportman, he did all the kinds of sport you can imagine. He went uh, to the Olympics with the Spanish um, team for bobsled, a 
think for the first time and the the winter olympic and he was a he was like a um a guy that loved more than anything he loves he loved adrenaline and i think i do think that's why he entered the formula one world that's why he bought a ferrari that's why he went to see ferrari and asked to drive for him so for me it was really really important to have that the experience uh on the track driving uh really driving those cars and changing this mindset from driving defensively of course with all the support of the of the stunts but just uh feeling more the 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 what a what a, a racing driver feels when you are on the track when you are when you are you're a, you're a little bit closer to to danger so uh yeah it was 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 uh i think was the, the most important thing for for the graphic and you had you also did some racing that's pretty fast production uh, pre-production yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we did a Modena that went in Southern California, and then when they built the chassis of the cars that we're going to mm -hmm. use, it was like an open wheel, single seater, we didn't put the the, um, the body on it, yeah, it was just the, the chassis where the connect, cameras were going to connect, we drove that on a, um, yeah, it was like an abandoned airstrip in, in, uh, in Modena, to, and you can really feel how dangerous they are, you know, obviously, versus a contemporary Ferrari, they're, you know, the, the goal was to get thrown from the car because that was considered more safe than, than to be locked in this, you know, moving coffin. Uh, <laughs> I'm just making up some shit to say. Which it does all the time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which movie is this for? <laughs> and, and you also, uh, they didn't have seat belts, so I wanted to say that. Uh, not out of like a negligence, it just wasn't part of it wasn't part of the culture. It wasn't. It was really an afterthought. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it was. It was. There was a theory that you were better off being thrown from the car. Uh, Ferrari refers to two of his friends who got killed on the same day: Campari and Bozzacchini. Uh, so the, the mausoleum we shoot is the actual family's mausoleum. That's the real place. And right a hundred feet down the road. Uh, the grave, uh, the mausoleum is for Kampari and Bozak Kings, who were both killed. Um, so the idea was you'd rather be thrown from the car than dragged, than dragged by the car, so that's why they didn't, that's why they didn't wear seatbelts. But what we had was touching on is a real, kind of, a, something anachronistic to us, which is why did people uh, fight to get a seat in the Ferrari when the mortality rate was so high? The spring team that we see assembled, half of them were dead by the end of 1958, Peter Collins died in 58, so did Michael Hawthorne, there was another driver, I think Moose out Walsh was killed in 58. And as, as um, that's that racing, the, the racer mentality is so important to understand that about, about Enzo, and uh, that when he drives him, um, which he articulates in the Catalina, the second Catalino scene, uh, it'll never happen to me, it happens to my friend, I'm gonna give up driving on Sunday, back of the car by the next weekend. Um, and that's, that's a, is a critical understanding to that, which is why we shot the black and white footage. So the one, uh, we wanted to establish that Enzo is, is, a, is, a, is a racer, a race car driver mentality. He's not a businessman with, with a manufacturing company. So. And, and also, I guess, to explain how he's, the, again, we were talking about a lot is the it pre, being pre-psychology that the why he's come up with his own kind of coping mechanism to deal with all of that danger and still perceive you know how he feels he needs to by building a wall to stop uh, uh, this not, not uh, get in his own way from from uh, going as fast as he wanted to go his his, cope, his self self-made coping mechanism. Uh. Yeah, I was going to say, and Lara is as much a part of this life as, as Enzo is. One of the, one of the, if you're going into the background of, of Lara and her biography, she was known as the Don Bufa, the, the, the car, when Enzo met her, as a, she was singing in cabarets in the 1920s, 
and turn, and as he writes in his autobiography, he fell head over heels in love with her, this is a vivacious woman. And, um, uh, and they built this together. She pawns some of, this is all backstory, but it's important to all, all, all of us on the stage here. She pawned wedding gifts that he gave her to help buy the components to build the first car because they got an order and a 10% deposit and didn't have the money to actually build the, build the car. And then within uh, six races, that first car won a Grand Prix, and then uh, they won the World Championship within five years. Um, so. I'm just gonna ask one more, and then we'll, we'll open it up uh, to the audience. Um, I was wondering if you could speak, Michael, and also the actors, um, to the, what you see as the significance of the opera scene uh, in, in the film. You, I was watching your events press conference and you described the film a, a couple of times as operatic. So I'm, I'm curious about you know, the, what that means to you and also the use of the opera. Well, the, the, opera scene, the opera scene for me, there's, there's two scenes in the film that bring back to the really important backstory and, and colliding into the present tense of the film. The, the, second, the, the second one is, we refer to the scene on Saturday, it's when Enzo and Lara get into this argument, and you, we realize uh, his self-determination, uh, the great engineer, okay? that scene. The first one is the opera scene, and, and it would, the, 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 what I love about that scene is that it, the whole sequence is that it dimensionalizes these people, including Alan Bisa, you know, her son, Enzo's older brother, going off to war and never coming back. Uh, Enzo's brother and father died in the same year. And, um, and, and, and Lara recalling when, when they were young and living in one room apartment and, uh, and with, with Dino, uh, the, the, the charisma, the joy, Life and so uh, expressed. Uh, Lena Larry, uh, you know, with uh, the moment she tells him in the bond out, the room to the factory in 1945 that she's pregnant. Um, and, and, but larger than that, opera is in the blood, the lifeblood of Modena. Paparotti is from Modena. The Storky is the actual Storky. It really is next door. You really can't hear the opera through the walls into the Ferrari house. That really is the Ferrari house next door. Um, the common alley, which is right around the corner, here's where Paparotti began. And Modena had two football teams, two race car manufacturers, and two opera companies. And um, uh, an opera was a, was a cross-class uh, Events. Everybody went to the opera. The same people went to the football fans went to the opera. And the tenor, Mr. Noki, heard about it from the audience. So it's, it's a very raw, vital um, you know, expression, an over, uh, over, over large expression of emotion. We sit back as the audience whacks across us and brings and, and generates memory, sensory memory within us. And that's the way opera works. There's also another I have to open into, which has to do with that aria and traviata. And also election and so on. I don't know if either Adam or Penelope wanted to add to that. For me, it was a very emotional thing to shoot because, um, you know, Michael says he likes the music playing and going to your own and travel with your imagination about the, the good moments that you have together as a couple and with Dino. And let the camera roll in for I don't know 20, 30 minutes, and it, it was like a, a very important moment for me where I also discovered a lot of things about her. And also, you know, once again, there is an event that changes even more her life. You know, and discovering that there is a new, a new family, a, a new she has another son. Um, now she has to get strength from, I don't know where, but, but she gets it, but, but it's, it's a very hard thing to deal with when you are already in such a state of pain and sadness and desperation to, to see that there was more than you didn't know, you didn't know. And maybe you are the, one of, of the few people around in your environment that doesn't know about this reality that your, your husband is, is having to another. So it's a very, very important scene for that reason. There's no, no dialogue that, that says so much. All right, we'll take a few questions. Um, <laughs> we're just going to start here. Uh, uh, my, 
So, well, yeah, I think he gave me such a great treasure to be with, with these characters that represent uh, so much in, in history um, and still today in so many places around the world. It's not a minority of women that we are constantly intimidated by the beauty and work and the fabric and fighting. And in this case, Laura has a, a husband that loves her and respects her, even for hating each other, knowing that she has beauty and killing each other for something. Take rehearsals 
to the point where it's something I wish I was shooting. So we always try to stop, you know, and just kind of sketch it in because 